that's what we do. Well, I was just feeling this way and God understands. You know what I'm saying? When we want to yield to the flesh is what I'm talking about. And we'll say, God understands. But the Bible says that we are not supposed to make provisions or excuses for operating in the flesh. What you do is say, yeah, I operated in the flesh. God forgive me. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And that's not saying you that's not saying you're not gonna ever operate in the flesh. But you have to recognize that and ask the Lord to forgive you because He would not tell us to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh if we couldn't do it with the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Hallelujah. That's what we, I think that's sometimes what we forget is that we have the power of God operating on the inside of us. And we trust this flesh too much. Hallelujah. Guilty. Hallelujah. <laughs> we trust this flesh too much when God sent his Holy Spirit to live on the inside of us and give us instructions and directions. And you know what? You know when you're on point. You know those that are filled with the Spirit of God, you know when you're on point. You know when the, whole, when the Holy Spirit is nudging you, okay, you need to go ahead and get in your word. You need to go ahead and pray. You know what I'm saying? And he's not saying that just to uh, uh, have conversation with you. He's saying that so that you can act on it because, number one, you're going to need it. Right. Amen. And then we want to stay full of the Spirit of God. Be filled with the Spirit. And, and that's interpreted be being filled always. You have to always get in that Word and get full of the Word daily. Da this is a daily walk, man. Yes, and you can tell. How many of you can tell when you haven't? done what you know that you should do Amen. and sometimes we end up with an attitude or 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 are we a little um a little more testy or either we um we look at things in a natural way when god wants us to look at things by faith amen Hallelujah. That's why he says that we can call those things that be not as though they were. And we can't look at the circumstance. We have to look at what the word of God says. Oh my gosh. We have to look at his promises and know that we will inherit his promises. He said through faith and patience that you inherit the promise. Hallelujah. How long? I don't know. <laughs> Amen. So we need to, uh, it says the word perfectly represents what you think in your spirit. Look at there. The word perfectly represents what you think in your spirit. If your physical mind agrees, then you'll see supernatural power and ability flow through your soul into your body, which produces results in the physical realm. And that, you know what, that is, uh, I think that's such a good visual that you can, for me, because I'm visual too, uh, to keep in your mind, you know, we got, we had the valve, spirit, soul, body, and the valve is down here. And how much we have it open to the spirit of God speaking to our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. And then it manifesting in the flesh. Because see, this flesh don't operate on its own. Okay? Because if your spirit uh, left your body, this flesh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's gone. So your flesh don't operate on its own. Your soul has made a decision and then it comes out in your flesh. That's what happens. And it ain't no, the devil made me do it. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. You listen to your mind, your will, and your emotions. And that's why we do the things that we do. And it shows up in the flesh. Amen. And, and that's why uh, sometimes you can tell when somebody is walking in the spirit or walking in the flesh. And it's not that you're judging that person. You see, I like Sister Beth said, this just <laughs> like it's just what it is. Sometimes we try to make stuff so deep and so hard, and it's not that hard. <laughs> it's really not hard to understand. And see, if you look at see, if your physical mind disagrees, 
then you're double minded and you will receive nothing from the Lord. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. This is so important. 14, 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. Oh, we have to stay single minded and keep our mind on the word of God if you want to see the manifestation of God in your life in every area. And when you miss it, just repent and get back on target. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, go ahead and read it. Uh, 1433. I think that's the right one. Okay, it is something. That's not the one. Mm -mm. It's a, um, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. <laughs> a double minded man. James, James. I wrote that down there for something and I don't remember whatever. <laughs> What'd you say? Uh, yeah, he's back there. Yeah. Where it says uh, James 1 and 8. I got to figure out why I wrote that down there. That might be for the next one. James 1 and 8. Go ahead and read that. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. See, if your physical mind disagrees, Actually, it's going to show up in the next scripture. If your physical mind disagrees, then you're double-minded and you will receive nothing from the Lord. That's why when you believe in God for something, you have to stay on that word. And you can't start confessing what you see manifesting in the flesh. You got to catch yourself because that means that you double-minded. If you're, if, you're, if you're speaking one thing, if you're believing God for one thing, and then you're confessing something else that's double mindedness and you will not receive what you have believed from the Lord and sometimes that's where uh, uh, we as the people of God uh, when we don't receive what we prayed for that's a hindrance for us when we going back and forth okay I, I believe God for this and uh, just just I'm gonna use the kids for example because that's one of my things I pray for my kids. And uh, we can't, sometimes we get focused on their behavior and not the promise. And if we're believing God and we're confessing the word over our kids, then we can't start confessing all this other stuff. Amen. Yeah, you see what's going on. You know what's happening. It's not that you're denying it. But you know what? My seed is blessed. I don't care what's happening. I don't care where they are, what they're doing. Hallelujah. My seed is blessed. And when you start speaking other things, then you negate what you said you were believing. And then you have to repent and get back in faith. And that's the bottom line. And we have to be careful of that because the visual sometimes can be so strong that you begin to confess what you see. And, and sometimes we even have to remind each other about that. Amen? That, okay, uh, I, I need to stop saying, hey, 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 is that what you're believing for? Amen. Is that what your confession was? Amen. Then, then, that's why it's good to be around people that are uh, strong in faith or believe in God. Because you can strengthen another person, and then maybe there's times that person will strengthen you. Amen. And don't let somebody, if you're around someone, don't let them keep talking negative around you when you're believing God for something. I don't care if they're talking negativity in their life. Correct them gently with the word of God. Say, wait a minute, sis. That's not what we believe. We're people of faith. We call those things that be not as though they were. That's how we walk. We don't walk like that. We don't walk like the world. We don't go by what we see. Amen. So we have to be uh, six. It says single mindedness brings stability, but double mindedness causes instability. And then it's, it has the, it does have the scripture right there. Let's read this together. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith, 
nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Look at that. When you, you know what that tells me? When you open the door for double-mindedness, it causes you to be double-minded in all your, you, it causes you to be unstable in all your ways. You know when you open the door for the enemy, he ain't just going to put his toe in and leave it there. Amen. He's going to ease on in there. Amen. And sometimes, sometimes that's why people don't receive, we <laughs> don't receive the things that we prayed for when we thought we should have received it or whenever it's supposed to come is because we get in doubt and unbelief. And sometimes we just got to call it what it is. You know, sometimes even we, when we consider ourselves people of faith, and, and sometimes we'll justify a little bit. Well, I'm just telling it like it is. You know what I'm saying? But if you tell it like it is, tell it like the word say it is. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> that we can, we can stand on the word of God. All of his promises are yea and amen. And if you get unstable, if you start wavering on the promises of God, if you start adjusting your life, you done said this promise. You done confess this word, but you haven't see you haven't seen the manifestation. See the good the thing is we don't know what's happening behind the scenes. Well, if you haven't seen the manifestation, then you start. Uh, um, what word do I want to use? You start adjusting your life according to what you see in the natural. Instead of adjusting your life according to what you have seen in the spirit, what God has shown you in the word, you adjust your life to the natural. And we, gotta, we have to, as being people of faith, we must stop doing that. And then we encourage each other in the faith. And don't get upset when I say, y'all know how Pastor Pat is when you come in and talking. Okay, we're going we to stop go down right now. Amen. Because we want to keep an atmosphere of faith in the building, number one. Because it's not about us. Hallelujah. And you don't need to spread your unbelief all across the building. Amen. On your job, you don't need to spread your unbelief. Amen. I don't care if everybody else is saying another thing. You stand on what's the, what the truth is according to the word of God. And that's what we have to do, not waver. Because people are looking for somebody that are, not, that are not wavering in their faith, that are standing in their faith, and they also see what's going on in your life. And they looking and they looking at you, and they say, I don't know how she doing this. I don't know how she going through this. Sometimes we look at it as like, oh, they ain't going to believe God because of what's going on with me. No, it'll cause them to believe God because you're standing in faith. You're keeping your joy. You're keeping your peace in all of those situations. And people notice that. Amen. And then you see the manifestation of the word of God because you remain single minded, single minded. Amen. And that's what we have to do. We have to stay in agreement with the word of God. Yeah, I know sometimes it can be challenging. And you know what I say sometimes? Sometimes it's best just to close your mouth and don't say nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are times when you just need to be quiet. And because you got, especially when you got too many emotions going on on the inside. Yeah, because we deal with things. Amen. And sometimes it's good just to be quiet. And don't get that out in the atmosphere. Because sometimes that's what we do. We say things that go against what we're confessing. So it just nullifies it. Then you got to repent and get back on faith. But that's the beautiful thing about it is that when you do that, you can repent and get right back on faith. Amen. 
Hallelujah. 6A, the mind of Christ is in your spirit. Look at that. The mind of Christ is in your spirit, but your soul doesn't automatically think that way. And that's why we have to renew our minds with the word of God so that we can get in agreement with what the spirit is trying to tell us. And you know what? Like I said last week, see, it is awesome because when we get in agreement with the word of God, that's like two agreeing. You agreeing and you agreeing with the word. So that's still powerful. You still got the power of two agreeing. Amen. It ain't that you got to always grab hands and touch somebody to touch and then agree. We can get an agreement with the word of God and that's two folk agreeing. That's me and God being in agreement. Amen. Hallelujah. That don't say you don't get an agreement with your sister or brother, but that's me and God in agreement. Amen. And there's power in that agreement. And we got to make sure that we don't, uh, 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 what I say, dummy down to the world. And even sometimes in church circles or other believers, we don't dummy down because they say, well, you ain't dealing with reality. Yeah, I'm dealing with reality. That's why I'm staying in faith. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm dealing with reality of the word of God. You're dealing with the world's reality. I'm dealing with it on a whole nother level. Amen. I'm dealing with it according to the word of God. And that's what we want to do. We want to deal with things according to the word of God we want to speak those things that God speaks we want to stay in agreement with God amen and sometimes y'all let me tell you something it's a fight but he said fight the good fight of faith <laughs> amen that's what he said it's a fight it is a fight to stay in faith, especially if you're around what well, what which it's an oxymoron, really unbelieving believers. Amen. <laughs> you it, it can be a fight because sometimes you know, and you you don't you um it doesn't feel good sometimes when you're around people and you know you believe God and you say something and they look inside eyed at you. Sometimes that don't feel good. That's, that's right. Sister Bev said they say it don't take all that. Shoot, it take that and some. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you want vict to live victorious in this life, because this is a victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Amen. That's what overcomes this world. And that's what we're doing. We're overcoming this world. We're not getting in the middle of the world, but we're overcoming the world. Hallelujah. We should be up here looking down. Amen. In the spirit, we should be up here looking down. No, I'm not getting mixed up with you. I'm an overcomer. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's how we have to live. That's how we should live. If you want to reign in this life, if you want to see the blessings of God and the fruit of the Holy Spirit operating in your life, that's how we have to live. Amen. And you know something? It ain't no shortcuts. Can't nobody lay hands on you and give it to you because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to hear the word when you come to church. You got to hear the word when you're at home reading it. Amen. Hallelujah. When you're playing your tapes and you're watching the word on TV, you got to hear the word. Hallelujah. Because that's how we maintain our faith. Amen. So the mind of Christ is in your spirit. You have everything that you need. Hallelujah. When you're in some kind of mode, funk or whatever. <laughs> Amen. Get spend some time with the Lord. And even if you're around somebody, you get y'all, you gotta be careful when you get around people. Be careful. Y'all know I don't mean grab the care. But you got to guard, let, let's, let me put it that way. You have to guard your heart. You have to guard it so that they don't contaminate you. Amen. Sometimes it's a fight. Fighting the good fight of faith. Sometimes it's a fight. I, I work very diligently, 
by the Spirit of God, it ain't just me. I'm not really that smart to know all of that. I work very diligently to not let somebody else contaminate my faith. Amen. And that's what you have to do. Because, y'all, that's the only way we're going to win the world. And it's about us walking this out so that we can win others. Pastor has been talking about the light, letting our light shine. And that's how you do it, by walking by faith. You let your light shine so that they can see your good works and glorify your Father. You are the light in darkness. Hallelujah. You are the light in darkness. And you want your light to shine bright. Amen. When you're a light and you come in darkness, if that light is shining bright, they like, ooh. <laughs> that's a bright light right there amen hallelujah and that's what God wants us to do he wants us to walk by faith so people can see the power of God operating in our lives amen, amen. B it says uh, it takes it takes effort to renew your physical mind to agree with your spirit mind it does not come by osmosis it takes effort to do that. And you have to put forth that effort to do that. And sometimes we, um, whew, sometimes we put other things before that. And I know we have different ambitions. I do. We have different ambitions in life, and there's nothing wrong with that. Having different ambitions and wanting to do other things, there is nothing wrong with that. Because God also wants us to have some enjoyment in this life. Amen. And I'm not saying you don't enjoy Christ. Y'all know what I mean when I say that. Amen. Do things. You know, maybe you want to go to a good, clean movie, you know, <laughs> or uh, go to the beach or whatever. That's, that ain't even a problem. Maybe you want Sister Angie is, and Sister Felicia are furthering their education. That's not a problem. But make sure that you keep, that you stay in the word of God and you stay prayerful. Make sure you take that time. Don't let other things become more of a priority. Let me tell you how, um, I'm just going to give an example about myself because that's who I can testify to. Amen. Uh, there were certain things when I was coming up in church I built my life around serving God. Amen. Serving God came first. Amen. And of course, um, and, and I need to, to put this in there. Of course, you know, different seasons of life, you have different things going on. Amen. When my kids were younger, sometimes there were some things I couldn't do. And, and to be honest with you, there are some things that I did do that I should have left off to pay more attention to some of the things that they were doing. You know what I'm saying? But what I did, I, uh, um, if I knew I had church on a certain day, that I put off other things to make sure that I went there that day. You know what I'm saying? Do stuff come up sometime? Yeah, we know, Sister Ann, I, I don't want you to feel guilty is what I'm trying to say. Okay, uh, she's doing classes and she let us know, okay, during this season, it's a season that she's in class. You know what I'm saying? So she still watch it on the, watch it on the YouTube and Facebook and all that. But what I'm saying is don't, don't uh, uh, arrange your life around what you want to do arrange your life around what god wants you to do amen because sometimes we even think about when we come to church we just think about ourselves whether we feel like coming or not i don't know why i'm going this way but y'all listen to facebook and youtube amen but uh uh sometimes we think about ourselves, how we feel what we doing what we got to do and you don't think about if a soul is coming there that you need to minister to that day. We think about our selfish desires. Yeah, there are some days I don't want to get up and come. I'm just going to be honest with you. And I don't know, look like more of that sleep thing be on me on Sunday than any other day of the week. 
<laughs> and it'd be like, oh, oh, but you know what? I can't think about myself. I can't think about how I feel. You know what I'm saying? I have to think about the purpose of God in my life. Lord, who do you want me to touch today? Lord, I'm, I got to, uh, I need to get there so I can teach. I need to get there to, so I can set up. I need to get there so I can do praise and worship. I need to get there so I can help collect the offering. I need to get there so I can do the video. You know what I'm saying? Thinking about others more than yourselves. Amen. That's how the spirit of God will lead you. Amen. Hallelujah. Instead of yielding to our flesh. And I, like I said, y'all, I know, I know I'm telling you, even some Thursday sometime, I would rather not come. Amen. But I tell my, I tell my soul, hallelujah. Yeah. So you rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So you going. Hallelujah. Because you know that's where your mind, your will, and emotions are. You going today. Hallelujah. And day just like David, he told his soul what to do. Hallelujah. <laughs> you going to rejoice. You going to be happy. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we have to speak to our soul. Amen. And tell our soul, no, this is what you're going to do today. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's funny sometimes. I don't know about y'all. And like I said, I use myself because sometimes we can, when we, if it's something that we really want to do, oh boy, I don't care how we feel and what we, we got our mindset to do it and we just do it. No, I got, I got to go here today. I got to do that. Amen. And we have to be that same way. Amen. When we're dealing with the things of God, because it's not about us. We are not our own anymore. We have been bought with a price and we are in the earth to glorify God. Once you become born again, you belong to the father and you are in the earth to glorify the father and God. However, I can glorify you. That's what I want to do. I want to glorify you in my life. God, what Whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to say, however you want me to feel, that's what I want to do. I want to glorify you in my life. I want to be like Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. And when we uh, determine in our minds that we want to be like Jesus, that's you're going to kill this flesh. Yes. Amen. We can't say what we want to say. We can't do what we want to do. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the mind of Christ is in your spirit, but your soul doesn't automatically think that way. And I'm going to go with B and then we're going to uh, stop. It says it takes effort. And I think I read that it takes effort to renew your physical mind to agree with your spirit mind. It takes effort. Amen. You have got to put forth some effort. Yes. Amen. In order to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That takes effort. It takes effort when somebody says something crazy to you to not say something back. Amen. And sometimes you, sometime you may need to walk out the room for a minute. Amen. <laughs> so, you know, so you know what I'm saying? It takes effort to, to rein your flesh in. Amen. And that's what we're supposed to do. Walk in the spirit that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay, Lord. Hallelujah. I hear you. Because the Holy Spirit is telling us, be quiet. Don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes we override. <laughs> and then after we override them, we be like, oh, Lord, I know I shouldn't have said that. Because if you say something generally, generally. Because it depends on that other person, too. Because sometimes the other person just got strife going on. They just got stuff going on. But uh, generally, okay, if you say something and you say it the right way, I, can, I don't know if I can even say that statement. Because sometimes people, yeah, I can. Because if you're being led by the Spirit of God, God, God leads you to peace. He's a God of peace. So if what you say don't cause peace, don't say it. Right. Just keep it to yourself. And I will say this disclaimer is that sometimes the other person is got stuff going on. And if they come back the wrong way, just stay in peace. Amen. It ain't even about you. 
<laughs> and that's how we that's how we take it sometimes. You know what? It ain't even about you. It's about what's going on in them. And you say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Love you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do anybody have any final comments before we um close for the day? Hallelujah. Did you want to say something? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. God's word is spirit and it's life. Hallelujah. It's spirit and it's life. When the Spirit of God speaks to us, that's Him. And He's given us life. And He's given us life more abundantly. Every day, He wants us to go higher and higher. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So thank God.